My name is John, and this is another installment of Bayes Theorem. Today I'm going to discuss a real-life trial that happened in the United Kingdom back in the 1990s. Uh, what happened was a woman was convicted of murdering her two small children, and Bayes Theorem actually ended up helping her to get acquitted in a retrial. So what happened was you had a woman had two children die suddenly and unexpectedly. And of course, you know, uh, to no surprise, when that happens, alarms go off and you think, boy, hmm, what happened? And uh, uh, certainly there are going to be a certain segment of the population that says, well, something, you know, she did something with those children. She claimed that they died of SIDS. The prosecution claimed that she murdered her children. The prosecution brought in a witness that claimed one in 8,500 children die from SIDS. And so the, for two children to die from SIDS, we would use a basic uh, concept in probability, which would multiply one over 8,500 times one over 8,500, and that's approximately one in 73 million cases. So, and this is, you know, this is also a good example where, you know, you can use statistics sometimes to frame things a certain way. So, the witness, the math witness claimed that, well, there's just a 1 in 73 million chance that these two both died from SIDS. And that was a strong argument to end up convicting her. However, there was a retrial based on a, a few things. One is that, for the second child anyway, there was some biological evidence uh, that, they, that the prosecution withheld that may have argued toward SIDS. And also, the mathematician left off a potentially important uh, part, which was that if one child has SIDS, the second child might be more prone to having SIDS. That's where you get to, into something called dependence or independence uh, and probability. So, it was then concluded in the retrial that they brought in another witness about one in 1,300 children will die of SIDS. And if you have one child dying of SIDS, it's about one in 100 of another child. So, you know, you have some, some dependence going on, right? And that kind of intuitively makes sense, right? If something is maybe genetically wrong with one child, uh, you, wouldn't, you probably wouldn't say it's one in 1,300 for the other child. And they can, somebody concluded that there's about one in 100 of the, uh, uh, the second child having SIDS. So, what would the probability of both children having SIDS be under this scenario, it would be 1 over 1300 times 1 over 100, and that is approximately equal to 0 0.000077. Still a very rare situation, right? And probably strong enough, at least in many cases, to convict somebody. But here's one of the, here's one of the problems with just kind of looking at something in a vacuum. You know, even in this second case, you can make a strong argument, well, it's pretty rare for both children to have died of SIDS, so that woman must be uh, somewhat involved in the death of her two children. But then you have to look kind of at the other side of the coin. You say, well, that's rare, but also, isn't it rare that a woman kills her children, right? So in some ways, you, you know, you kind of, it's, it's a relative thing. Well, you might have a rare situation here, 
<clears throat> but, excuse me, but you also have a rare situation here. How do you kind of join these together? Base theorem to the rescue. Okay, so you had another expert that testified about 30 of 650,000 children would be murdered by their mother. Also keep in mind, I mean, these numbers are, they're estimates, and we do that a lot in probability. Uh, I mean, there's all kind of ways you can look at, I mean, you could even filter this, and you could, you could get to, you know, whether or not they're affluent, right? Whether or not they live in certain parts uh, of the country, certain parts of the world. And so, you, you know, you have these experts take, kind of taking their best guess as to what these probabilities are. Now, this is 30 of 650,000 children being murdered by their mother. That's for a case of the mother murdering one child. And they say, well, isn't it probably rarer that a mother murders two children? Right? I mean, you may murder one and not the other. So they said, they also estimated that one-tenth of these would murder two children. Okay? Okay. So how do we put all of this together? Well, if we have 30 out of 650,000 children would be murdered by their mother, and we're saying just one-tenth would murder two children, then 30 over 650,000 times one-tenth is equal to 0 .000046, okay? So this is also a rare situation, all right? So the defense is going to say, hey, you have a rare situation here, but I have a rare situation here. We're going to use Bayes' theorem to kind of sort this out. We're going to label A as two children die from SIDS. That's, of course, what the mother claimed. B is going to be two children die suddenly and unexpectedly. Remember that Bayes' theorem is the probability of A given B equals probability of A times the probability of B given A over the probability of B. Okay, we want to find this number. We want to find the probability that two children died from SIDS given that they died suddenly and unexpectedly. Well, we know they died suddenly and not unexpectedly, right? Because they, they were dead, okay? It was unexpected. What is the probability that they really did die from SIDS? So if we can find this, all of this information, we can answer that question and thus hopefully make a conclusion as to whether or not she should be convicted. All right. Probability of A. What's the probability that two children die from SIDS? Well, we answered that earlier, right? It was on the board here. I'll write it again. It's point zero 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 seven seven. That's the probability we established earlier that two children will die from SIDS. Probability of B given A. What's the probability that two children die suddenly and unexpectedly given that they die from SIDS. Well, this is trivial. Why do I say it's trivial? Because it has to be 100%. Because, again, think about what this says. The probability that two children die suddenly and unexpectedly, given that they die from SIDS. Well, if you're given that they die from SIDS, then they certainly died suddenly and unexpectedly. So this is one. What's the probability of B? What's the probability 
The two children die suddenly and unexpectedly. Well, the probability the two children die suddenly and unexpectedly is going to branch off into dying suddenly and unexpectedly while dying from SIDS or suddenly and unexpectedly while dying not from SIDS and we're assuming here if it's not from SIDS it's because the mother murdered her children so if you watch the the last episode where we talked about cocaine users and we branched the denominator into two parts which is that B which is two children dying suddenly and unexpectedly can happen with A happening or A not happening. What's the probability of B happening with A happening? That would be 0. 0.0000077 times one. So that's the probability of B times the probability of A given B, which we earlier said was one, and the other part is that B can happen with A not happening. So what's the probability of B happening with A not happening? Well, A not happening means that they were murdered, right? Because A not happening, not dying from SIDS, means that they were murdered, which we said was point zero 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 four six and we're going to multiply that by um, one minus this value uh, which was point oh 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 seven seven again this was the probability that they um, that they died from uh, that the, the that uh, they died from SIDS so the probability that they didn't die from SIDS, which is the rest of this, is one minus that, and that's equal to 0.999992. We just take one minus this, and it's equal to this. So again, to summarize, B, which is two children dying suddenly and unexpectedly, can be broken into them dying suddenly and unexpectedly with A happening, that's this part, or them dying suddenly and unexpectedly with A not happening, that's this part. If we put it all together and we calculate this, we get a right, this is the symbol for approximate. It's approximately equal to 0.6 or 60%. What does that tell us? It tells us that the probability the two children died from SIDS given that they died suddenly and unexpectedly is 60%, which means there's a 60% chance the woman was telling the truth. No, she may have killed her children. Bayes' theorem would say there's a 40% chance. And this happened in the United Kingdom, and I'm not completely aware of the United Kingdom's roles, but I would be pretty sure that you better be more certain than 40%, right? One minus 60%. You better be more certain than 40% before you're going to lock somebody up for murder. She ended up being acquitted. And that's the end of the story. So Bayes' theorem ended up um, basically acquitting her. Thank you for listening. Again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comment section. I will be, uh, I'll try my, do my best actually to get back to you and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you.